Good evening and welcome to your evening news bulletin with television Tony News. Looking at today's headlines, Her Majesty Queen Anas Bao presents certificates for nursing graduate students who've completed their diplomas from the Queen Salote School of Nursing. Tropical Cyclone Coffee moved away from Tonga yesterday evening. A Tongan man appeared at the magistrate court for the murder of an Asian man in 2012, and the Free Church of Tonga donates food assistance for the victims in Hapai. These are more stories together with news from around the region, sports, and the weather forecast to follow later on in the bulletin. Now for the news in details, I'm Galolaine Tonglava Paletua with the news for tonight. Her Majesty Queen Anas Bao has presented certificates in diploma of nursing to 28 nursing graduate students from the Queen Sanwate School of Nursing. Her Majesty also presented 20 successful nursing students who have completed the advanced diploma in nursing practice with their certificates during Queen Sanwate School of Nursing graduating ceremony, which was held on Friday. We'll join Linda Filiai with the details. Her Majesty Queen Nanas Bao presenting the new nurses recruits with their diploma certificates. The presentation of certificate was carried out during the Queen Salote School of Nursing graduation ceremony, which was held at Queen Salote College Hall. In the remarks from the Honorable Minister of Health, Lord Tuyafitu, he thanks Her Majesty Queen Nanas Bao for creating the ceremony with her presence. <laughs> Nurses have been trained to look after patients in the kingdom and their crucial role is in line with His Majesty's vision in collaboration with the trial from the former Minister of Health and Minister of Education and Training. A special training has been carried out for advanced diploma in nursing practice in management of non-communicable diseases. Meanwhile, during the graduation ceremony, the Chief Nursing Officer of Viola Hospital, Dr. Amelia Tuipolotu, conducted the presentation of the nurses' annual report. She says there are four main sections in the Ministry of Health where all Tongan nurses are serving. This includes clinical nursing, reproductive health nursing, Queen Salote School of Nursing, and new section which has been set up focusing on non-communicable diseases. The Chief Nursing Officer adds that about 344 nurses currently serving at the Ministry of Health. Meanwhile, Professor Jill White, who facilitated the Diploma Nursing Practice in Management of Non-Communicable Diseases, delivered the keynote address during the graduation ceremony. As nurses, by virtue of your study, experience and registration, society gives you permission to enter to the rare and sacred spaces in the private and intimate lives of strangers. It's, it's an intimacy not born of friendship or kinship, but an anonymous intimacy, intimacy, as it's been called, by virtue of being able to claim that title, nurse. We have from that privileged position a trust. Trust to touch, trust to hear private stories, trust to know family histories, trust to do painful things, trust that we will make things better, or at least make them bearable and understandable and above all, trust to do no harm. Professor White praised the duties performed by all nurses towards the public. Attending the program were the Australian High Commissioner Brett Eltham, New Zealand High Commissioner Mark Talbot, Health Director Dr. Siali Agaola, Bishop Swane Patita Painimafi, parents and guardians of the graduates, and many guests. The tropical cyclone warning coffee for Tongatapu Ewan Hapai was cancelled yesterday evening and this afternoon the Met's office just cancelled the gale force wind warning for Tongatapu and Ewa waters. This was confirmed to radio and television Tonga News by a senior forecaster from the Met's office, Moleni Tuholoaki. Anasiu Falekao no has more on that story. Tropical cyclone Kofi moved away from Tonga around 6pm last evening. Speaking exclusively to radio and television, Tonga News, a senior forecaster from the Met office, Moleni Tuholaki, says the strongest of the tropical cyclone was recorded at 28 knots. He added that Tonga was close to the centre of the cyclone when it passes by, 
where many of the people in Tongatapu felt the strongest hit of the cyclone around 3 to 7 a.m. early Sunday morning. The reason for cancelling the tropical cyclone warning for Tonga was because tropical cyclone coffee moved away from Tonga around 6 p.m. last evening. Since Saturday morning, heavy rainfall was recorded in Tongatapu and rainfall recorded for the past two days has exceeded the average amount of rainfall expected for February. Also, the director of the National Emergency Management Office, Levin Aho, says that no serious damages were reported about from minor floods in low-lying areas such as Popua and Kolomotua. <laughs> After the tropical cyclone hit Tonga, a survey team was sent to conduct a survey in Tongatapu and Hapai, and the outcome of the survey stated that no serious damages were caused from the tropical cyclone Kofi. Before that, a team from the His Majesty Armed Forces, Police Officers, Refinement Officers went early yesterday to clear the areas that faced minor damages. Apart from these low-lying areas such as Popua, Klomotua, Halano, Isileli and Golovai were facing minor flooding due to their location. Meanwhile, senior forecaster urged the public it is vital to prepare for any natural disaster as we're still on the cyclone season. For Television Tonga News, I'm Anasiu Falekaono. Tonga Power Limited recorded about 200 electricity faults during tropical cyclone coffee at the weekend. Speaking to radio and television Tonga News, Tonga Power Limited's Chief Executive Officer John Van Brink says the faults were mainly due to the strong winds which caused fallen trees over the power lines. Sin Lado with the details. Tonga Power Limited recorded about 200 electricity faults during tropical cyclone coffee at the weekend. Speaking to Radio Tonga News, Tonga Power Limited's Chief Executive Officer John Van Brink says the faults were mainly due to the strong winds which caused fallen trees over the power lines. It was really all around the, um, the connections of the houses. Our main feeders held very well. So we were, as I said, we were very fortunate that, um, that things did not get worse and we weathered things very well. He also adds... The 200 faults recorded by Tonga Power staff was mainly from the Western District. Uh, no, we did not. Uh, we, we didn't need to actually uh, drop, the, uh, drop the supply because our feeders were still intact. Um, what did concern us, and we had certainly had discussions with the National Emergency Management Organisation with um, the director there, was that um, <clears throat> some houses actually were potentially uh, getting into an unsafe situation due to the uh, the high tides, areas like Sopu and um, uh, Popua, um, where water actually comes into the house. Um, and it's something we're, we're actually discussing right now about how we actually we should be handling in the future, uh, whether we should be um, disconnecting or isolating sections of the island or of Nukualofa uh, due to high water table, rather than perhaps just waiting for high winds to be the, uh, the, the thing that drives us to sh shut power down. According to the CEO of Tonga Power Limited, the cost of repairing the damages and power faults is estimated at about 20 to 40,000 per anga. Moreover, he added that his staff have returned from Ha'abai and they will help out with the operations in Tongatapu after tropical cyclone coffee. The Tonga police has called on the public to provide any further information on two men that relates to the investigations of a homicide case in Halaleva on February 20th. Speaking to the media today, the police commissioner Granto Fi says police will find the criminals responsible for the case and take them to justice. Linda Finiai with the details. In a press conference at Longolongo Police Station, the police commissioner says police have two men of interest regarding the homicide case in Halaleva. The police are asking the public to help find them. Yeah, we are interested in the, in the um, two Tongan males. Uh, one was wearing a black t-shirt with no um, sleeves, it was just a t-shirt with no sleeves, and the other one was wearing a blue t-shirt that has a picture apparently of um, a cartoon character Mickey Mouse on the front and nothing on the back, we don't think there's anything on the back. So we're interested in the movements of those two people. Uh, on the day of the homicide and anyone who knows anything about people of that description. Inspector Tevita Fifita was also at the press conference. 
He told reporters that no sharp object was used in the suspected homicide case. Inspector Fifita says the incident occurred inside the deceased shop and up to now no one has been charged or suspected for the case. No more information was released about the incident. Inspector Fifita also called on the public for any information related to the person of interest by calling 922. The deceased is currently at Viola Hospital Mortuary while police continues their investigation. From the Magistrate Court, a Tongan man alleged for a murder case back in 2012 has appeared in the Magistrate Court this morning. Makalatu of Mataika was alleged for the death of an Asian man in his electronic shop at the railway road. The accused is remained in custody to reappear in the Magistrate Court later this month. According to Principal Magistrate Saleh Simafi, the allegation for murder will be the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, his co-accused, who is an Asian man, was charged for murder is still in police custody and is due to reappear in Magistrate Court next week. In the same court, a mother alleged for theft and housebreak of different homes appeared in the magistrate court this morning. Anna Kato Kakala of Longolongo, who resides in Papua, was alleged for theft of traditional Tongan items from the Free Wesleyan Church Minister's residence in Halaleva. The traditional items are valued at more than 7,100 baanga, which includes six tapa mats, 10 foot Tongan kia, and various taovalas. According to, to the prosecutor, Inspector Memaladu, the accused committed all these crimes in different homes in Dongatapu. The accused was also due to be called again this morning at Mua Magistrate Court. The principal magistrate, Salas Mafi, ruled to adjourn to the 24th of this month. Also from the same court, an accused alleged for theft while working at the Leola Duty Free Shop was called in the same court this morning. Lupi Fonua of Fo'o is alleged for theft, embezzlement, and also for falsification of document. Lupi was out of the country while the other two accused have been called in the magistrate court for the same case. Katalao Ve'ila of Fasmoyafi and Baya Savo of Kolomotua are also charged for the same counts. They are lodged for theft of 81,000 baanga. According to the prosecutor, Inspector Memalatu, the amount of the final amount of the money on this case is yet to be determined but will be once investigation is completed. All accused are due to a reappear in the Magistrate Court later on the 24th. From a separate case at the Magistrate Court this morning, Vaha Afei Moonga of Haveluloto is alleged of trying to attract the attention of a young woman. According to Inspector Memaladu, the accused is a married man and he is due to appear in the same court on March 17th. It is expected that the cost for street lightning will be lowered after the Tonga Energy Roadmap Implementation Unit or TERMIU announced that light emitting diode or LED street lights have arrived. The new LED street lights will help reduce the cost for street lightning but still maintain its lightning quality. Sinladu reports. The technical advisor from the International Institute for Energy Conservation for the program, Somai Fon Amnyasuk, say more than 300 lead street lines have arrived in Dongatapu. He says 150 lead street lines will be put up in Dongatapu and the remaining 150 lines will be distributed in the islands of Hapai, Vavao and Ewa. In a press conference with the media, the implementing partners of the project say the new lead street lines will replace the existing high-pressure sodium lamps. I think the energy efficiency is very important for the Pacific Island, especially Tonga, because majority of the electricity in, in, in the Pacific Island are produced by diesel generator. And the cost of the electricity per uh, kilowatt hour in the Pacific Islands is very expensive, uh, especially compared with the region where I come from, from Southeast Asia. We have much, much cheaper the electricity cost per unit. So saving the electricity one uh, actually save the uh, money from the household and also the government, but also save the environment because you produce electricity by diesel generator. The program includes over 180,000 worth of street lighting upgrades on the outer islands of Ha'apai, Vava'u, Ewa and also Dongatapu. The implementing partners of the project includes Termai Il, Tonga Power Limited, the IIEC and the Asian Development Bank.
Students and villagers in the Kolomotua district now fully understand how to keep their water supply clean at all times. This is the outcome of a special training hosted for the villagers, which aimed at informing the villagers on how to keep their water supply clean. Anasil Falikao note with the details. Participants who took part in the training in Kolomotua include students from primary levels, youth and both men and women of the village. Speaking to a television Tonga News, a Class 6 student from Kolomoto's government primary school said they have learned a valuable lesson during this short training. I've learned a lot from this training. I have finally been able to know the causes of unsafe drinking water. For example, if there's a tree next to the water tank, the leaves will fall into the water tank and affect the water. It is important to keep it clean at all times. By cleaning it and using some of the chemicals from the Ministry of Health, and also to repair the rusty roof cover of the house. This is the standard of our water supply. After the training, I had learned the causes of climate change and how human activities such as burning rubbish or waste affects the environment. During the training, participants were taught on how to prevent these problems from causing unsafe drinking water. The training program was organized by the Tong Community Development Trust, funded by the European Union, and the Australian Aid and the 4CA project. And church ministers of the Free Church of Tonga from the Eastern District this morning donated food for the people that was, that was affected in Hapai by Cyclone Ian's devastating visit. Here's Salama Fulivai with the details. Two food containers donated from the Free Church of Tonga to be presented to the church members in Hapai. Speaking to radio and television Tonga News, Reverend Lisiate Holomesi says that the donation including yams, bananas and other food crops. He also mentioned that they conducted a survey in Hapai and understood that the other food items in Hapai is in a satisfactory condition from previous donations. They later agreed to donate food crops. Meanwhile, Reverend Holomesi says the donation is for the members of the church in Hapai before distributing some of the donation to other church members. He says that there will be more donation in the future, but that will be from the Western District. Radio and Television Tonga News understands that this donation will be shipped to Hapai tomorrow evening. That's the local scene for tonight. Up next is the Pacific News.